everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I want to share with you my journey of transitioning to a more natural shampoo. It's been quite challenging and I think a lot of you can relate. So what I've been using is this uh, soap, uh, this shampoo bar from the Rocky Mountain Soap Company and it's a rosemary not really in, like light and really beautifully. I haven't had the smoothest journey. If you are in the zero waste natural beauty world, you probably have heard a lot of people say like, I use a soap bar and it's so great. And nobody seems to talk about the less great stuff. Therefore, when I washed my hair with a shampoo bar the first time, and it's soon three weeks ago since I started using this bar. I was not happy with the result. It felt like a like a gooey, disgusting helmet in my hair. So yeah, I really wanted to talk to you about this and share my journey because I feel like it sounds so easy when people say like, basically, if you want to reduce your waste, use like toxic product. A shampoo bar sounds like a great idea, right? I think we really need to talk about the challenge you might face when you transition to a shampoo bar or a more natural shampoo. So this is my shampoo bar update two and a half weeks into using a shampoo bar. So one week ago I was about to give up. My hair was so gucky, a lot of residue. Uh, in my hair that didn't get out and my hair felt disgusting even the same day as I washed my hair. I was searching the internet for solutions. One of the suggestions was to do an apple cider vinegar rinse. So I did that and my hair felt actually so clean, so beautiful uh, in a way that it hasn't felt in a very, very long time. So I was super happy. The hair was clean for quite some days actually and then I washed my hair again on Sunday and after that wash my hair didn't feel like fully clean and not 100% I think that apple cider vinegar rinse created a reset of the situation with my hair got all this gunk, old products out of the hair so I actually could properly give this bar a chance so I will shortly go and wash my hair again and give you an update so I just washed my hair or oh, it was a little while back because I've done my makeup as well um, We'll see how this wash turns out once it has dried. Uh, I'm gonna let it air dry. So my hair is dried now and I'm actually really happy with it. At least for now, it's the cleanest since I transitioned to the shampoo bar. It feels the best since then and with the exception of the time when I used the apple cider vinegar rinse. Yeah, the only thing is that it feels a bit, it's a bit here that feels a bit waxy still. I don't know if you can see, but it doesn't feel 100%. And also somewhere here in the back, that doesn't feel 100%. I'm pretty sure it's not because I haven't rinsed well. I've rinsed really, really thoroughly to make sure there was no soap residue left at all. I also um, made sure to really, really try to massage and lather all over my scalp. But it could be also that I missed those spots. Uh, we will see, or it could also be um, that my hair is still detoxing and getting used to uh, this natural shampoo bar. So it's just to wait and see. I'll let you know my issues so far since transitioning to this shampoo bar. It's been that it seems fine, although not 100%, the first day, and then the second day, it just feels so gross. Eleven years ago, I tried the no poo method. It did not work for me at the time. And also because I do dye my hair and I do not want to stop dyeing my hair, I feel like uh, going with a shampoo bar is probably one of the best solutions for me. So some of the benefits with using a shampoo bar is, as I mentioned, they don't come in any plastic bottles. They are like quite long lasting. It definitely depends on how often you wash your hair, how much hair you have and how big the bar is. But approximately four to five bottles 
could go into one of these bars. I don't know if this is true for this bar specifically. Uh, I'll let you know. I will update you with how my transition and my journey is going. So another benefit with the more natural shampoos is that it's sulfate free. Generally, uh, the soap bars are sulfate free with some exceptions. Sulfates are used in a lot of shampoos to create a beautiful ladder and foam. So it helps to create that very clean feel that we're so used to in conventional shampoos. Uh, but the only downside with using sulfate is that it strips our hair and our skull from our natural oils and when you transition to a more natural shampoo uh, it's going to take some time for your hair to adjust the hair naturally is more used to getting that stripped off and needed to produce more oils so it could be one of the reasons why my hair is currently not the greatest. Another thing as well is that a lot of the traditional shampoos or like more conventional shampoos, it, it, they leave this residue so they might feel clean. That's also why you might need to switch your shampoo after using it for a while because it creates that residue on the length. So when you switch up your shampoo, you get that clean feel again. Soap bars are nothing new. They were actually something people used to use prior to the 1940s where we got introduced to the conventional shampoos as we know it today. So where to get your shampoo bar? I researched a few different companies for this video. I will link most of them down below. I haven't tried any of them expect this ones that I have from the Rocky Mountain Soap Company. All of the ones I linked should be all natural, expect the ones from Lush. Lush is great if you want to use a more conventional shampoo but want to reduce the packaging. factor to talk about when it comes to why a shampoo bar works for one person and might not work for another person is of course your hair type. So I have very fine hair and um, I don't I have a lot of fine hair so it's not like I have thin hair in that sense it's just that it's very fine but I thought I had dry to normal hair as uh, my shampoo bar is made for but it might be that actually I have a way oilier scalp than I thought I had and that could be one of the factors why it doesn't seem to work really 100%. There could also be other factors like here where I live we have very very hot water and I also mainly lived in places where there is really hot water like I used to live in London which is also known for having very hot water and I was growing up in South Sweden which also has very hot water and I remember as well as a child going to my grandparents who lived in another part of Sweden washing my hair there and my hair felt so soft Another factor to bear in mind is climate. In the winter here in Alberta it becomes like up to 30 minus really easily and we, you wear a lot of hats and the air is really really dry. The environment is just so different from summer when it's really hot and warm here. It's still quite dry uh, here. It's different from living in a more humid um, and um, Sort of tropical climate of course and or if you bathe a lot in the sea etc uh, etc et so there's so loads of different factors what affects the quality of your hair and also how you respond to different shampoos there could be different factors that it's important to 
take into consideration and that could also be things that for some reason maybe does not make this shampoo the best for me or maybe it is maybe I just need to sacrifice short term for the long term benefits basically please leave a comment below if you have tried any of the shampoo bar companies I mentioned or if you know any other companies because I really really think it will help both me and other people watching this video uh, to hear your experiences and know more great brands to look for uh, because it can feel like a jungle especially when you're starting out thank you so much for watching please do not forget to subscribe if you haven't done so already and i'll see you next time Hey-do!